in value streams are everywhere even if we don't see them and it's about how we position this ourselves in this way that we are effective and we provide outcome both to ourselves and to organizations Hello, welcome all to the session of value stream management uh, from the Agile list of Barcamp 2022. I'm really glad that you came and this is my second year presenting in the Agile list. I found it very interesting, uh, not only for the content, but also about the interactions that we're having with one another working on the Deutsche Telekom, but also outside um, of our telco uh, industry. So what uh, are we going to discuss today? Today we're going to discuss about uh, value stream management. Value stream is a concept that you pretty much have seen without maybe knowing that we're talking about value stream. Value stream is like everywhere in our ways of working, in our ways of communicating with each other, in, uh, in any pretty much way. So value stream, if we do, let's say some very short historical background, um, I think that the most distinguished uh, time in the value stream uh, history is when Toyota used a value stream to, um, to establish lean management on production lines. There, uh, Toyota has identified some very key aspects of how to manage waste and how to manage value. So in value stream management, we have value. So these are the activities that create a product, an outcome uh, that can be measured and uh, that it's according to the scope that we're working in, or it's about waste, things that we are doing because we have been asked to do because it has been there from <laughs> always and things that we can avoid. So uh, some uh, really quick, quick introduction as well for myself. I am Dionysus Voronos, so please call me Dennis. I have been working with value stream, I think, uh, pretty much for five years. Uh, I started working on a lean management with a value stream in the production um, production line with, uh, with the refurbishment when we refurbish the routers and uh, the TV boxes. And uh, recently, I have been uh, working on and uh, getting expertise in value stream on agile maturity. So how do we utilize value streams in order to scale Agile, in order to uh, achieve the results? Um, that would not be my focus though for our today's presentation. I want to be a little more interactive, a little more working with you and understand how we can apply value stream practices and techniques in our everyday personal environment so that we can increase our effectiveness and establish ourselves as relevant and important for the organization and the industry that we're working on, just, uh, and thus designing our career path. So first things uh, first, uh, we have an agile scaling problem in large organizations so far. Uh, though there have been many frameworks, it's really difficult to establish a very proper and clear way uh, to make an established large organization uh, into uh, the Agile. Uh, as far as I know, I don't have a 100% very perfect use case that this has been transforming. And uh, this issue has created a gap between the tech giants and the industries that are traditionals and uh, in the industry, for example, telcos ourselves. Um, why is this gap though happening? Well, first and foremost, uh, we see that it's rare high level uh, development commitment and engagement when we are talking about agile and digital transformations. Um, we are many, have many hierarchies in our organizations and this creates a class of mindset between the agile, which is an horizontal way of doing things, uh, and not by managing people with the traditional way that people have been very successful in doing it, to be honest, uh, in the telco environment. Uh, secondly, is that uh, when we work with agile teams, and this is something that I have also experienced working as a project manager and an organizational and strategy manager uh, in Deutsche Telekom, is that many times we need to communicate with different stakeholders that have different needs 
and they have been usually working with a traditional working um, uh, working method. So, not only speaking here about waterfall uh, or like a projectized environment, I'm re I'm really also speaking about having a fixed mindset and trying and and, and having a big resistance to change of why I need to be agile. Um, last but not least. The agile frameworks that we are having right now are pretty prescriptive, and this means that we have a lot of prerequisites to follow. It's, we have like the sprint planning, the sprint refinement, the retrospective that has to be time box that everyone should speak out on the daily stand up, follow the three rules of the stand up, uh, and things like that have made people a bit um, inflexible, even though we're working agile. So. Here, value stream management comes to try, let's say, not be here too promising, but let's be really pragmatic as the value of value streams is and be enterprise aware and pragmatic that we are in a larger uh, organization that has been working with a very successful way with many years and we don't need to destroy everything. We need to make the change by pushing the limits step by step, little by little, know what the organization does and operates in this how so we offer many uh, changes step by step and this is why context counts because different organizations have different needs we cannot let's say as we cannot build a building with a uh, the same way with a framework as we need to identify different uh, uh, the environment and different factors even here why should we propose a transformation that it's irrelevant to the context to, of the run that we want to work on. And last but not least, and this is a change with the most agile frameworks, is that choice is good. We have many use cases to take ideas from. We have many networks ourselves, that we have many successful people that we can take ideas. And we see that many people and many leaders in the industry out there pick and choose different topics of expertise and manage to create new patterns of how we should work. So they're, they're re-innovating themselves, they create more choices and these choices are good. This is the theory, no more for that. I hope that I didn't bore you so much. So let's go, what is it for me? What is it for you about uh, thinking in the value stream? So. Right now, command and control ways of working, the usual and traditional hierarchical ways of working, lose ground. We are transitioning into a form that roles that only manage people will become less and less. And this creates a stress to ourselves because our, um, our career path is challenged. Like 20 years ago, we should be uh, focusing, let's say, for example, that I, go, I will become the leader of the team, maybe director and stuff like that. It was pretty granular, let's say, on the uh, uh, corporate ladder of how we work. Right now, it's not it's not that way. And you have experience also in Deutsche Telekom that we have several initiatives that uh, it's around that. And if we take a look at tech giants like uh, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, they already work horizontally. Funny enough, I have been studying many use cases around these tech giants. They will they never talk about Agile. Um, leaving out the discussion about why is that, let's go to the fact that they don't talk about Agile, but the ways of working are very much related to Agile. So let's speak to the uh, Agile Manifesto principle who is talking who is talking about finding better ways of working. So let's focus on having better ways of working. So in this new world, what should we do as individuals, as professionals? We need to develop expert and communication skills in a deep, safe growth mindset. The image at the bottom of the slide, it's a very relevant and very, um, uh, it, it's really new actually, that the HR department of Deutsche Telekom has uh, been created in order to push and promote uh, ways of developing ourselves in a growth mindset, in a T-shaped mindset, and also a B-shaped, which is um, very close to the T-shaped. So, in these ways, what I would like you to think about is that by adopting a value stream management, you identify the value creation activities of your own work leading to increasing your effectiveness and preparing your career path in this new uh, business world. Um, so, 
let's try and go from this point of view of the strategy and the vision down to the uh, what we can do as ourselves. So this is a common organizational structure. Actually, this is not so common. It's like a projectized way of working. The hierarchy way of working is much complicated as well. We have leaders and directors and stuff like that. So we're talking about uh, value stream and value stream is about lean and lean is about creating value and creating waste. So here we have managers who are often in conflict with each other and about resources. And this given uh, these messages give uh, different messages to the teams and this causes waste. We also know that this comes from the top meaning that the executive directors have uh, bonuses that uh, are about productivity and effectiveness that often are in conflict with another executive director. So you can imagine how much silos we can, how many silos this way of working uh, creates. So it's not like everyone is talking to each other. At the end of the day, what does it happen? The customer has a demand but the demand of the customer isn't captured from one place. It goes through a whole of working packages and then the work packages many times need to uh, go up directly to the sponsor or the executive director for approval. This way we do not manage the value, we manage the people. Okay, so the people become too busy to manage their own people. You have seen that, that you may be your organization, maybe the team that you are working into is very much in a false urgency, let's say, that they're trying to do things that they are busy, but not effective. They're not producing. So we need to move past, we need to move beyond about people if they are properly utilized, being productive, doing quality work, working on the right things, things like that. Nowadays in the modern environment seem a bit patronizing, let's say. People need to be more self-accountable, they know what to do, and they need to have the empowerment to do so. So in a very simple format, uh, a value stream like that can be also depicted in uh, a Kanban board, in flight levels, in the safe framework, everything. I'm not focusing right now in the content, I'm focusing on the mindset, because the value stream begins and ends and hopefully continues with the customer. So it's about a customer. It's a customer driven approach about how to manage organizational work. And we see that many businesses, if we move beyond for example, tech industry, but we're moving into the, let's say the marketing, that we want to be more target oriented, that we want to do more for our customer. Our customer is valuable and some customers are more valuable from each other. And at the same time, we want to be inclusive because we want our products to be available for everyone, but also being personal made, tailor made. So a value stream is like that. It's about the set of actions that take place to add value for customers from the initial request through the realization of value by the customers. And I have spoken also about similarities. It's Lean Manager first and foremost. It's about flight levels and also Florian is here as well. He also uh, is an expert of uh, flight levels and he very much supported me in the new uh, project I'm working with because I wanted to collect ideas from one another. We're not living, we shouldn't live in a world of conflicting, uh, let's say, methodologies and which is better and if this is agile or if this is not like academical ways of describing things. This, this, this doesn't benefit anyone at the end of the day. The, what we want to do is to define better ways of working in order for the people, for the professional, the individual, have everything uh, in their control in order to change things, in order to produce value. So other similarities, system thinking, very important. We are talking about not how the components work like this individual or this department. It's about the interactions and the context that we're having in a, in a large system, how we speak to each other, how we communicate with each other. And if you want to um, think about yourself, uh, how you are in this value stream, I would suggest that you think about what is your current working. So you maybe um, are being delivered tasks through emails. Um, for clarification through emails. Maybe you have a Slack or a WebEx Teams or a Microsoft Teams uh, chatting that you communicate with each other and identify new tasks that you want to do. These tasks, do they start from your strategy of the team and do they end in providing value? 
I think that if you do this exercise, you will find many examples that you do things that are not ending in value producing activities. So what you should do that? Well, as uh, from an individual perspective, in, um, in issues like that, when we feel that we are not producing enough, that we are not becoming relevant, it's a very we can also become emotional. So it's an ego activation thing, and it's very difficult to uh, communicate this to the environment, like that this way of working right now, it's not beneficiary for the team and it's not beneficiary for, for me as an individual, as a professional. I do not provide as much uh, as I would. So because we live also in a corporate environment, we tend then to become a little passive aggressive because we do not have the opportunity to, let's say, uh, insult each other and be aggressive and things like that are not are not good for our communications and of course we shouldn't do it but we also don't have a way of um, distressing of le letting the the pressure out so in situations like that being concrete and being solutions oriented and knowing that the task that we are doing is not creating value it's very important to be aware of it and then communicate it to our managers to our teams and to find commonly better ways of working, find this common ground that, uh, you know what, manager, if I continue to do this, this will be the consequence. And this will not be a bit beneficial for the team either uh, for me. So I propose A, B, C solutions. What do you think about it? This in this proactive and also deliberate way of working, we can be able to uh, remove delays and dependencies. So identify these dependencies, visualize them, manage them, and finally eliminate them. Some other uh, things that we could do is uh, of making everything visible and accessible. So it's very easy that uh, when we work at hoc, let's say that we have many tasks that come back and around that we do not make, uh, it's not easy to make these patterns visible, but uh, what can we do there? What is our job there? So, uh, and last but not least, if we do not have a product and if we do not have this very interesting way and concept of minimum viable product that we have in the agile environment, we could have a minimum business increment. So what would be that? It would be like the smallest piece of work to be used to validate a hypothesis. So if you are working in uh, supporting value stream, for example, in human resources or finance or even project management office that are things that support the real value creation, there what changes can we do? What is the minimal viable change that we can make? So thinking like that, it's about communicating to people what is the value of doing things. So when you go up uh, and want to discuss something with, uh, with a colleagues of yours and when you have a conflict, at the end of the day, you know what? I have been in many conflict ma management courses and they tell us that to find the similarities. I like this concept, but I, I often find it very difficult to follow because with people I am in conflict, it's like I don't see any similarities, especially during the conflict. But at the end of the day, don't we work uh, at the same environment? Don't we want to achieve the same things? Okay, we have also our personal agendas, let's be frankly here. But we do want to make, uh, to be effective. We do, we do want to show a good face and uh, maybe also receive uh, recognition. So. If we try to communicate what we want to do as a change in this conflict through a value, a value perspective, that what we want to do wants to add value and this value added activity will also benefit the person that we are conflicting with and we influence him in a way that, you know what, okay, I hear your, what you're talking about and maybe we disagree, oh, okay, but we disagree. I want to understand why your opinion, do you believe that creates value? What does it provide to us and to the team? And if you, if you position yourself in a way that you are ready to listen to this perspective about what value does this person think it would provide, maybe it does provide value, maybe it doesn't, but you will have a common ground of discussing things and making things uh, more uh, clear. So um, thank you for that. I would like to have a discussion with you and think uh, about uh, issues that you are having currently in uh, your ways of working that you feel that are waste, that you feel that you are not efficient, that you are bored to do, and that you don't know how to communicate that.
Um, do you have any examples that you would like uh, to share? Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a good idea to question everything you're doing if, if it has uh, value to actually to the goal of the company. <laughs> um, because I think everybody could identify things uh, he or she is, is doing for nothing um, and, and leave it out or just don't do it anymore. But then I think it's also important to question does does somebody else need it for his or her work so it might not be too too easy to um, decide what i can throw overboard <laughs> that's true and um thank you very much uh Babette, for uh, for your comment it's uh, it's very intriguing and uh, this is a, a concept about how we create a value stream and how we how we manage it so um, in the value stream, first and foremost, we try to not start with putting names on the, the value stream. And uh, that gives us the opportunity to focus on roles and responsibilities. So, um, if we want to visualize in a way like uh, the scheme that I have, like in my presentations or in a Kanban board, like flight level to do, that we have many different columns that the tasks need to pass by in order to be, um, to have a product outcome. Um, there we first need to identify these, um, these stops, let's say. Let's see the columns as stops, as, um, as gatekeepers, as, as gates to the way that we work, that something coming in, in a task and needs to come out as a different task or uh, with some added value there. So if we have so many gates, we need to be able to make sure that the gates don't keep the, uh, the object, the tasks for too much time inside it. So what should we do there? We should know what is uh, the process, and it's a process discussion of what in each stage um, is the the task um, is the task doing? What do we do to the task in its, in its stage? So these are we can then transfer this uh, these ways of working into responsibilities that we want an individual to be responsible in order to do this process in order for the task to be moved into another column. So. Many times, of course, we cannot move it. We have many dependencies and uh, it's very difficult to have a, a good flow of, uh, uh, of these gates. Then we should assign these responsibilities to a role. A role should be, um, um, should, should not be a person, but it should be um, something that collects responsibilities and is accountable to transfer the flow through the value stream. Then, from the roles, we should appoint uh, people through knowing how, what skills do we need in order for this task to be uh, uh, to move to the next stage with great quality and great efficiency, meaning really fast. So we know the skills that this responsible needs, uh, needs to have through the skills. And the responsibilities we align to the people. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't work this way in uh, our hierarchical way of management because we first try to appoint people to responsibilities and roles. It's vice versa. And uh, this uh, has created many problems about how we move the flow to one another. And uh, unfortunately, if we also have some bad culture habits, we may, we may end up in a blaming culture and we say and we tell names to one another that this person was uh, supposed to do that. He's the one to blame. She is the one that went to do pointing fingers to one another, leading to nowhere and not speaking about the responsibilities and the tasks that need to be made. Uh, sorry if I answered uh, your question a bit long. It was more like a comment that I would like to comment it on that it was a question and we have a lot of time left. So, yeah, please. Go on. Uh, Chris, yes, please. 
Yes, uh, I also have to sort my head a bit, but um, so last year in Agilista, I first uh, got the idea of the flight level thing. So uh, the, the cross reference, uh, I was uh, pretty eerie there. Um, we still didn't bring it into life really, it's just uh, in our heads, in some heads. And um, so what I find quite uh, struggling or uh, a really tough task is to start designing and finding people to design this big system approach and making the current situation visible, the big business uh, uh, flow from the strategy level to the operational level. Um, how do you approach this gigantic task? How do you find the design team or the change team? I don't know who starts doing this um, visibilization step one and then also starting the implementation of a new way of working well, that's a great question and i recently i'm facing with a similar situation and um, what i can reflect to to your uh, comment and thank you for that chris is that we very usually see th um, experience managers and teams so was the why, why we do this, and the what, like the operational, and we miss the how. So this visualization we're talking about is the how. And um, the skill set about it comes from many different uh, methodologies, like flight levels you, you talked about, uh, value stream, organizational development uh, theories, um, even human resources, things like that. So the skill set is there. How to persuade people in the team to visualize things and to introduce the how. For me, the main, um, the main blocker I see to this and I personally experienced is that when we try to speak the language of how to people that are only caring about uh, why and what, we have a communication gap. So what we need to do in order to be responsible is to learn to speak to value. Value is also the why we do things. It's also very much connected to the what we do things. So when we show the value as an end result and not um, and not the image, the, the image of a value stream and not the image of uh, the, the flight levels, not stuff like that, that people need to be educated to understand and uh, maybe also create a sense of conflict. But by using the value stream, by using the flight level, by using this methodology, we are going to have these results. And I'm talking about uh, product results here. I'm not talking only about culture and mindset, which is very important. I'm talking about um, effectiveness. And it's very difficult to measure effectiveness. We, we don't I don't think that we measure effectiveness even with velocity in agile teams. We use velocity in order to see how things uh, work and if we have any dependencies. But we need to talk about value. So what is the value produced? And when uh, you create something as a responsible person, you say, you know what, I think that if we do this change, this will happen. The end result should be something that everyone could understand. And you could deliver. So when you deliver it, and you, the people see the value, they will let you work in the how you work, in the how you want to work yourself. So it's a lot of coaching people. It's a lot of taking, let's say, interviews from people, discussing with people. What do they need? What are the expectations? What are the needs? And how? what can I do? How do I work in order to satisfy these needs? And what I, when I present them, I will not present them just the process. I will present them the value and the end result. So... Um, would be a way of working. It's difficult. Change happens step by step. We push the limits here of the organization and, uh, um, and the culture. And uh, the, the, these things need a lot of patience and also pace. We need to know when to accelerate and when to uh, deaccelerate. I don't know if you have any further comments, Chris, if you want to have a dialogue. Otherwise, we can pass to Florian. 
I mean, I would like to comment to Chris. Also, ah, okay. This is, this is, you. you know, also our problem, as you said, we 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 do a lot with flight levels, but how to find the right people and the, the, the end-to-end value streams, and the end-to-end value streams in a company like ours, like Dutch, they they can be huge. And there is not, as you mentioned before, there's these silos created by hierarchy, and people normally feel responsible for their silo. So and if we so the thing the, the thing that we come up with the best chance that we have is start as high as you can. So it means if you start with a leader who's responsible for a part of a value stream or for an assisting value stream, however, okay, you know that is not the end-to-end flow, mm -hmm. but it's the highest you can get for the moment. And if you can, you know, make there a change, if you can there create a benefit, then maybe people start talking to each other why this happened, as you said, talking about the how. And then maybe you can go to the next level and really create. Because if you really want to start from the end-to-end, -end, it's most of the time it's just not possible. Maybe you have... If you have maybe you have buy-in from the CEO, then maybe it is. But, exactly. But as long as you don't have that, start as high as you can. I don't know any transformational digital agile that hasn't been uh, top down. So totally agree with you. Please, Chris. Yeah, I just um, like the comment of Florian uh, also. And um, from my experience, um, uh, so let's talk here a bit uh, in a flight level uh, lingo. Um, Flight level three, I, I see it working and it's possible to start there. And we even did talk about the strategic flow. Let me put it this way. Um, the thing that is, that is missing in, in my context area is typically the two, the end-to-end -end process. I mean, that's exactly your topic. And like the three and, and the one, that's pretty okay to do. And I like so much uh, the notion of Klaus Leopold where he has this picture with this uh, pointing on the team's operational work. Yeah, we're so agile. So <laughs> it's okay to make pe teams agile, but really having the discussion about the end-to-end -end flow where different teams have to collaborate uh, also on operational development level, that's so complicated and so hard to start there. I mean, we, we have uh, in our company a role which is called business epic owner. So they're coming from the business side and their responsible is, the responsibility is to make this business epic, so a piece of value, to, to somehow to carry it through the organization that it gets done. And we did with them um, a small exercise. Um, let's go to a haircut, you know, barbershop. So what are all the processing steps uh, if you go have a hairdress, go to the hairdress and if you get a haircut. So we could, and then you say after that, so they created a value stream for hairdresser. So pretty simple example. And then we ask him, okay, and what is your business epics? What is the value stream of your business epics? And then they have, uh, you know, uh, applied the same um, uh, me method. And then example for one of the steps was implementation in IT or something. And that was only one step of their eight or nine step, you know, value stream map. So a very rough one. I said, okay, can you imagine what happens if it goes to IT? And I said, yeah, I need to go to, I know, a couple of different departments because the work is split up there and stuff. So it gets completely messy by that but but um, on the very high level they got the idea like okay my business epic is moving a couple of steps and one of those steps is it and so we had a more or less an end-to-end -end flow for business epics so really like end-to-end -end on a very high level and i think on this very high level it needs to stay we cannot make it more exp more detailed because then the view is not usable anymore so but to have at least people care about moving of business epics that would be a good first step yeah and the coordination between because it's not like okay that's our portfolio of business epics let's us make the best out of it it's like that is your responsibility this is your business epic you know push it through and everyone gets assigned his own or her own business epic and then we don't have a collaboration anymore yeah. yes and uh, if we think like in the 20th century aspect of the hierarchical way of working it's uh, to my to my personal uh, view the same issue about middle management because always the middle management was like the sandwich between the two levels of d making the work and receiving why we do it um i i'm i'm not seeing any way that this could be like in, in this way solved i think it should have been solved by now if we had it um so 
my my ways of working and my perspective and why I what I suggest uh, also from a consulting point of view is first top down and if we can't persuade uh, uh, the top down what is the change that we can make to ourselves as professionals uh, what is this change in order to be relevant and uh, to be proactive so thinking in a value stream way as professionals time by time every person every individual then we will start creating a, a cultural change which uh, which at the end of the day which eventually will uh, will happen um do we does everyone has the patience to do that of course not so uh, but uh, i think it's very proactive and responsible solution to work in this way a large and traditional organization yeah please chris I just keep it short because I, I realize I have uh, tons of questions popping in my head. I just uh, would like to invite Florian uh, if he had some time to mingle because uh, some of the things you just said, I, I would have some follow-up questions. Uh, it would be really interesting, but maybe someone else has other questions, so I go back to the background now. Let's, cl uh, let's close the session. So as a wrap-up uh, and uh, to sum up, which we're talking about Value streams, value streams are everywhere, even if we don't see them. And uh, it's about how we position this ourselves in this way that we are effective and we provide outcome both to ourselves and to organization. Uh, in this way, we will stay relevant for the organization if and if we have a last transformation. Uh, in this way, we can learn how to do things without having uh, people managers, but having um, Product managers, having project managers with any role, having developers, having something that is going to have to do with expertise and, uh, of course, focusing our, in our communication skills so that we are able to coordinate with each other, to collaborate with each other, to lift impediments and to move the workflow from uh, the start uh, to end. Thank you very much once again. Uh, thanks again, everyone from the organization for hosting this uh, Agileista Bar Camp. I have uh, uploaded my presentation into the mirror boards and you also can find my contact details there if you're interested in anything that we discussed here about value stream, about how you can uh, work in this way, how you can connect value stream methodologies to the frameworks that the, your team is using, like uh, Scrum, Safe, etc and uh, position yourself in a, in a way that uh, you need to become relevant. So thanks again, and I wish you enjoy the rest of the Agile Star Bar Camp.